It's um, a very important development. It, um, nothing new in the um, report that was just issued. It confirms what we already know. Um, uh, in the summer of 2019, the United Nations investigated the topic and found that the state of Saudi Arabia and the Saudi Crown Prince was responsible. The big question is, you know, really what comes next? What will um, allies of Saudi Arabia, particularly in the West, in the United States and in Canada, uh, what do they plan to do now that... Um, it's been officially recognized that the de facto leader of Saudi Arabia was responsible for the murder and, dis and dismemberment of Jamal Khashoggi. That's, I think, that's what we're waiting to see. And I wonder whether you think this is going to do much to isolate the crown prince. I mean, he is the de facto leader of Saudi Arabia and certainly the guy that's being groomed um, and wants to take over. He may already be really running the show, not not the king. Um, and, you know, does, does this do anything to kind of sideline him realistically? Uh, I, I think it does, but as I say, as I just said a moment ago, it really depends on how forceful and consistent uh, global powers, um, um, Western countries plan to be. Uh, it's very difficult to see the Saudi crown prince really showing up at the next G20 summit or being allowed into the United States um, for the annual UN uh, meetings of heads of state that takes place in the end of September. Um, so. Um, uh, there's going to be a lot of public pressure now, too, you know, from 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 people to take it to the next level. Now that's been now that it has been officially recognized that the Saudi Crown Prince, you know, ordered the murder of Khashoggi. Uh, what about sanctions on him? What about applying the Magnitsky Act uh, on his personal assets and limiting his travel abroad? So. Um, I'm not sure what Joe Biden really has in mind. It's, I mean, the dilemma that he has is that, you know, the Saudi crown prince is guilty of murder, but the Saudi crown prince is the head of state of a major American ally in the West. So how do you square those two things together? I think that's a dilemma for the Biden administration. Yeah, it's such a great point. And we know the Trump administration was, was you know, seemed to be quite fine dealing with this guy. And, you know, the idea, and we heard it, you know, either directly or indirectly a number of times, uh, Nader, which was like, Okay, maybe he was involved in, in the killing, but, you know, there are bigger uh, things at stake here in the relationship, and we're not going to torpedo it all over one journalist who was murdered. I mean, that seems to have been kind of the, you know, the viewpoint from the Trump administration. Mm -hmm. uh, in all likelihood, it'll be different from Biden. I mean, I, I wonder whether you think we are going to see... Um, the world kind of rise up against uh, the Saudi regime or or not? I mean, this is the tricky part, right? As you're saying, how do you how do you deal with them when they've got a leader who now stands accused of murder? Absolutely. I mean, this is uh, the way I see it. I see it sort of as, you know, governments and business interests on the one side who want this issue to sort of wither away um, versus, you know, human rights activists, Saudi dissidents, uh, journalists around the world who, you know, uh, want this to be a, an example to other authoritarian leaders around the world that you simply cannot, in today's world, lure a journalist into your consulate, um, kill him, and then uh, hope to get away with it. So I think there are much bigger principles here than simply, you know, Saudi Arabia's relationship with the United States, for example. I think it's really important that governments around the world, including Canada, really sort of take a stand for, for the sake of journalism, for the sake of, you know, freedom of expression. And, um, hopefully to mitigate this type of sort of heinous behavior that unfortunately many authoritarian governments around the world are still engaged in. Nader Hashemi joining us from Denver. Hey, I appreciate you taking some time for us here in Canada as always, Nader. Thanks.